Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be starting to read a link, rather lengthy project called Letters Through the Curtain uh, that I wrote. This is somewhat finished, it might, I might revise it in the future, but for now, this is something I wrote last fall, and um, I'm just going to kind of get into it. Uh, there's a lot going on, and it's a novel length thing, it's 62,000 words. So, I'm just kind of going to get into it. Uh, and this is say, uh, yeah, this actually tells you what time and place so it's in, so, uh, there's not too much. Alright, so, this is Letters Through the Curtain by Sarah B. Priest. Wait. September 1985, New Jersey, USA. As I step off the bus for my first day of junior high, I only have two things on my mind. That I'm at my new school, somewhere in a New Jersey suburb, and that I don't know where my homeroom is. Um, I have my backpack with all the required books, as well as my gym bag that has stuff for soccer and track in it. That's just Monday. Tuesday, it's basketball and field hockey. Wednesday, I have track and soccer again. Thursday, it's just basketball and hockey again. Or Friday, I have gymnastics and track again. I always have games or meets or competitions on the weekends. It's just life. It's what my mom signed me up for, and I have no choice in the matter. Not that I actually care anyway. I like sports if they give me a good reputation. Anything to make me the popularity queen of my new school. I proudly poof my brand new perm and go to the front desk. Where's my home room? I ask the secretary. My name is Layla Payne. She looks me up. You're late. It's in the building across the lot. I don't waste my time. As I burst into the building, late and out of breath, I know one thing for sure. This year I'll be doing a lot of running. September 1985, Moscow, USSR. As I approach the middle of the city, I have just two things on my mind. Finding out which building my mom works in, and finding the building itself. I think she told me earlier, but I wouldn't remember. It all looks the same to me. I've been brainwashed along with the rest of the population or something. It seems counterproductive if no one knows where anything is, but I can't think about that now. I dread, I dread the day when the KGB will be able to read mine. It's not like I'm going to be able to ask anyone in the street because no one is out at 4 p.m. and even if they were, they wouldn't know anyway. I don't think anybody knows anything anymore unless they're in a high-level government job. Even then, I don't think anyone knows what the heck they're doing anyway. I rack my brain, trying to remember what my mom told me this morning. The address comes back to me in a flesh, which means I have com haven't completely been brainwashed or gone insane yet. I know my mom will worry if I'm late. Without hesitation, I break into a run. It feels so good to be breathing fresh air after a long day of sitting through classes. Also, I don't want to get caught. One simply doesn't wander around Moscow in the middle of a work day, especially if that person is a 12, almost 13-year-old girl in a school uniform. And before I know it, here I am at the cleanest office in the USSR. It looks like I'll be doing a lot of sitting around. September 1985, New Jersey, USA. Pain! Layla! The homeroom and math teacher is a burly ex-marine who has decided to scream in all of our names, last name first. I want to die and be buried in the ground. I don't like it when people yell my name. I like it when people put me in the spotlight. I'm a fashion idol, the girl with the perfect hair. But not when they yell it like they're crazy. It sounds like when my mom calls me, Layla Marie Payne! I'm not in for a good time. I have to reapply my ruby red lipstick now. I can't let the teacher see it. I don't think Marines believe in lipstick. Also, I don't understand my name because it means wine or dark beauty. That's honestly creepy, but at least my name is better than Jennifer. Like, all of my friends are Jens or Jennies. It's honestly like they... There was a unanimous decision to name baby girls Jennifer in the 1970s, but Layla isn't much better. It's a stupid name. And America's a stupid country, but decided naming everybody Jennifer was a good idea. The roll call is over, and the marine teacher dude decides to talk to all of us. Hello, everybody. My name is Mr. Gordon. I will be your math teacher. I hope you enjoy this school for as long as you can, considering we're all probably going to die in a robot takeover or a thermonuclear war to second outcome more likely, but still unlikely, because, Mr. President, now enough for the pep talk. I'll give you your assignments. Go to class and have a good day. After math, I follow a bunch of people I don't know to my first class, which is social studies. A blonde girl with red lipstick, braces, and blush is talking to a red-haired girl who's wearing a tight green dress. 
Why do they always have to drive home the fact that we're about to be obliterated? Whines the blonde girl. Don't be silly. We're America. We're not going to let anyone attack us, replies the red-haired girl. Well, what are you expecting the Soviets to do? Nothing's happened yet, which means we're fine. I decided it's time. Oh, who cares about that stuff? I break in. You have team sports to play and cute boys, like that one. My voice drops as I point at a boy about our age with dark hair, dimples, and a small nose. His hands look beautiful, too. I always can tell if boys are nice by their beautiful, soft hands. Oh, he's hot. The blonde girl grabs the red-haired girl's hand and points. I hope it worked. I mean, really. I couldn't care less about the Soviet Union. I live in a nice, free country. I have to worry about sports and makeup and friends and boys. But there was that time last year. September 1985, Moscow, USSR. I'm immediately greeted by a short, middle-aged woman in an eye-blindingly bright red dress. Oh, good, you're alive, she says matter-of-factly. Larissa Levitsky, daughter of... I know who you are, just come in, it's cold out. It's not, it isn't even cold, but I don't want to offend anybody. The fact that there isn't any color in the room doesn't help either. I'm your mom's secretary. Amelia Sokolov, I'm watching you. I think I figured it out, but I'm not going to say anything. Just ask me if you need anything. I don't usually see people all cheerful and helpful like this. They're usually jerks. I don't blame them. I want to ask her what's with the red dress, but that's probably a bad idea. If there is one thing I've learned in my almost 13 years of living here, it's don't, quest don't question authority. I need a list of rules, number one. I can't mess up. If I mess up, I'm in trouble. I've always been bad at talking to adults. I don't like addressing people. I don't like asking questions. I don't like being stared at like I'm Phil who needs to get a job done. And I hate it when the person asks me questions, especially when that person is a party official or KGB. I feel like I'm being watched, trained, and readied for life. Life with some state-approved job that will be watched, monitored, and surveilled until the day I die. You can sit down now, you know, says Se Secretary Amelia Sokolov. Amelia Sokolov. Amelia. Secretary Sokolov. Comrade Sokolov. Comrade Secretary. Comrade Secretary Sokolov. I just... I never know what people want to be called because I don't talk to people. Comrade Secretary Amelia Sokolov of the Communist Party to Soviet Union, I presume. That didn't go well. She gives me that evil government stare. We have names for a reason. Mine is Amelia. Yours is Larissa. I prefer to be called Risa, actually. Risa, that's fine. Do you need something? What are the rules? Rules? Let's see. She thumbs through a bunch of papers, and I realize that her nails are also painted bright red. I don't know where she got the nail cover, but I don't like it. Don't go wandering around Moscow by yourself. Don't wander around the building by yourself. Don't bother your mom while she's working. Actually, that last one is crucial. Yes, Amelia. It feels weird to be on a first-name basis of a secretary, but she seems a bit odd. Where did you get the nail color? I blurred. Shh. I was traveling abroad, she whispers. Why? Is that your concern? How did you get permission to leave? That's also not your concern. Of course, I shouldn't have asked. Maybe I never ask anything ever again. Asking too many questions is dangerous. It's just a rule. I can remember a time when I asked too many questions. Summer 1984, Los Angeles, USA. It happened at the Summer Olympics in LA, the one which the Soviets were boycotting. It was real hot. I was wearing a bright pink tank and a pair of jean shorts and with red heart-shaped sunglasses. I had my hair short and permed. It was my first perm and I was very proud of it. I was just getting a hot dog at a stand when I heard a voice behind me. I turned around and there was a small pale girl standing behind me. Her light blonde hair was up in a messy bun, and she was wearing some white shorts and a tank. I remember thinking that she wasn't the fashionable type, but, and that she wasn't American and probably didn't speak English. What are you doing? She asked. I guess I was wrong. She was staring at me like she didn't know what was going on. I'm just buying a hot dog. How about you? I squinted at her again, trying to figure the situation out. Nothing. I just wanted to know what you were doing. I told you I'm buying a hot dog. I was beginning to get annoyed. It's a food item. I'm buying it. It's good. Don't you know how to buy stuff? She looked bewildered. What? I still don't understand. Her voice was quiet, and it was strange and scary the way she looked at me. Okay, where are you from? I had to ask. I got cocky. I can't tell you that. I mean, I'm from Romania. Something seemed strange to me. Can I? She was fiddling with something in her pocket. She pulled out a battered change purse and narrowed my eyes on it. I zoomed in. It had the Soviet insignia on it. I'm a baby. I remember being surprised and scared and concerned. Oh, are you a defector? I remember whispering. No, I'm Romanian. I saw the fear in her eyes when she realized her mistake. I didn't tell you. It's not mine. Well, you just did. My head hurt. I'm paying for something with money, Soviet. I exposed her. I snarked her. I humiliated her. 
And if you aren't a defector, you're spying on us. No, I'm not. I'm... Well, we don't like communists. She looked like she wanted to run, then she whispered, I know, please don't hurt me. Why are you here? You aren't supposed to be here. I know it sounded mean. I didn't care. Look, her voice dropped to a whisper, I'm supposed to be Romanian. My mom is a cousin in Romania, and they couldn't use their tickets, so they sent them to us. I guess my mom got us permission to go. She seemed very scared. We're not supposed to tell anyone where we're from. Okay. I didn't think I could take the awkwardness much longer, and my parents were probably wondering where I'd gone. I need to go. I added quickly. Wait! She looked seriously desperate. And all I could think is, what does the darn commie want? She pressed a piece of paper into my hand. It's an address. It's where I live. I just about lost it. I'm not an idiot, commie! But I took the paper and ran. It's hiding in my sock drawer. I never told anyone about it, and I never will. I should probably destroy it, but I can't. She's haunted me ever since. The Soviet girl at the hot dog stand. I still have nightmares. Well, I can't waste time. I need to be getting to my English class. Summer 1984, Los Angeles, USA. The whole mess started sometime in the spring of last year when Mom came home from work and told us very quietly that we were going to the Olympics in the States. I don't know if I was more excited or scared. I love watching sports, even if they're being broadcast on TV with heavy government censorship and propaganda. It's not so bad, really. The USSR isn't living hell or anything. We're all real people. Anyway, we were confused because we were supposed to be boycotting the U.S. because they boycotted us or something. I don't know or care. So my sister completely freaked out, and Mom strictly warned us not to tell anyone, and she explained to us that she had a Romanian cousin whose family couldn't use the tickets and that she had somehow convinced the government to let us go as long as we pretended we were Romanian. I don't know if I want to tell you about how much of the time my sister spent looking at, st at stores and crying over American fashion she couldn't afford. I honestly thought they were way too flashy or even to ever wear in public, but she bought a catalog and some shoes. Shoes! Out of anything she could have gotten, she got shoes. And they weren't just any shoes. They were a color I can't even begin to describe. Yellow, green, but not. Too blindingly bright. It doesn't exist in nature. Only on American store shelves. Mom hired us a tour guide to take us to the Olympics and help us tour the city. Mom often left for hours at a time, saying she was catching up on work. She carried around a big briefcase with a bunch of books and papers, presumably. I know it was very heavy, but I never got to see what was in it. I don't know what I thought of America itself. It was too much. Every, everyone was trying to get us to buy stuff, and we didn't have any American money. We didn't carry much Soviet money anyway, but it doesn't really matter unless you're getting food or something. Literally everyone wants to get food at the same time. I've had to wait in a lot of lines. Not that I care, because I literally don't have anything better to do. Anyway, my sister started buying food anyway. Mom doesn't like to send me on errands. I always dawdle around. It isn't me who's being slow. Literally a ton of people. I want to try the new ice cream flavor or something. I never had any. Food lines, unfortunately, weren't abolished in America, and the Olympics was just nuts. It wasn't easy to get anywhere without bumping into people. They all told me, excuse me, or sorry. I guess it was nice. I started doing it back. I've been speaking English, Japanese, and German, as well as Russian, ever since I was three. So... It isn't an issue. My mom can speak a lot of different languages. Russian, Ukrainian, Czech, Romanian, Hungarian, etc. German, Italian, Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, English, French, Korean, Indian, and, I kid you not, Algerian. I don't know why. I don't know how. I just know that she's a magical human being. Probably not. I just wish I knew a superhero. I had to use the restroom, and I got up and walked by a hot dog stand. There was a girl there. About my age, but she had poofy hair and was wearing some jean shorts and a tank top. She looked rad. I think that was the word. Anyway, I didn't know how buying and selling stuff worked here, so I just asked a simple question. What are you doing? I had a deep psychological desire to talk to someone my age who isn't like us, who is different, strange, western, wild. She turned around, startled, and squinted at me skeptically. I'm just buying a hot dog. How about you? I decided to reply with sass. Um. Nothing. I was just wondering what you were doing. I told you I'm buying a hot dog. Her face was flushed and she's staring at me very closely. It made me uncomfortable. Russians are weary and keep her distance. It's a food item. I'm buying it. It's good. Don't you know how to buy stuff? Yes. Just not here. I tried to... I tried to return a blank stare. What? I still don't understand. I kept it quiet, innocent sounding, hoping she'd just leave me alone. Okay, where are you from? She looked at me. 
I'm terrified of answering questions like this. I can't tell you that, I blurted automatically. I mean, I'm from Romania. I wanted to try the phenomenon of the American hot dog. My mom did give me a little bit of American change. Can I? I pulled my sad change purse out of my back pocket. She scanned me like a KGB agent. I watched. Are you a defector? She whispered. I realized my mistake immediately. No, I'm from Romania. I trailed off. It wasn't convincing. In the last vain effort to cover it up, I blurted out. I didn't tell you. It's not mine. Well, you just did. Apparently, she could read minds. What was an American... Was that an American thing? I thought they were all idiots. I'm buying something with money, Soviet. She paused, looking scared. And if you aren't a defector, then you are spying on us. She was cold. No, I'm not. I'm... Well, we don't like communists. Communist. An arbitrary term for party elites. None of us are really communist. The USSR isn't really communist, based purely on philosophy. We aren't all equal. I was terrified. I whispered. I know. Please don't hurt me. Why are you here? You aren't supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be Romanian. My mom is a cousin in Romania, and they couldn't use their tickets, so they sent them to us. I guess... Um... I guess my mom got us permission to go. I was still scared. We're not supposed to tell anyone where we're from. Okay, she said. I need to go. Wait! I screamed. Maybe I didn't scream. I just had me... I just had made a link to the outside, albeit a very harsh one who didn't want me. I slipped a piece of paper in her hand and whispered. It's an address. It's where I live. I said, an address. It's not my address. Nothing is mine. She didn't understand. She, she looked livid now. I'm not an idiot, Kami. But she took the paper and she ran. When I told my mom, she told me that Kami is slang for communist and it's an insult. And the girl never wrote me.